Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of The Bomb Podcast, the business of music breakdown, where we look at various facets of the music business. And today in studio, we have a very interesting character. A lecturer in political science and more recently TV personality from Boersoeke Vrouw and also a member of the music duo Rien. Uh, with their debut single, Freistaat Vlakt is achieving gold status and more than 1.3 million views at this point on YouTube so far, uh, Renee de Klerk. Hello. Hello and welcome. Hello. Thank welcome you. to the studio. <laughs> Thank you for having me. So Renee, let's hit it off with the first question. How um, did someone with a, a degree in political science end up in the music world, in the entertainment world? It's a very interesting, a complicated question, but long story short, um, last year I entered for Bootkvrau, and I was on the show and I ended up with one of the Bure. And he's also in the music industry and we started making a bit of music together. And then one thing led to another and yeah, now we're in a, in a duo and we're making some music. Okay, wait, but let me just get that straight. Long so, story short. Rewind. <laughs> very like lots of detail omitted. No, but I mean, did you that you sat one night and say, hey, I'm a singer, you're a songwriter, or other way around, let's start a, let's start a band. But if you watched this series, you would have known. <laughs> I don't own a TV. Oh. <laughs> no, so... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, so he's always kind of been involved in music, which I didn't know about really oh, before wow. we met and before we got to know each other. I've not ever really been involved in music actively. I sang in my acapella group in high school and I did school choir and university choir. So I've always been somehow involved with music, but never, mm. like it was never my primary thing that, oh, I, right. that I did or wanted to do. Um, so yeah, it just kind of happened organically um, that we decided to play some music together and then our voices sounded good together. Yeah. Um, it kind of blends really well. And then, yeah, we decided to, to, to try something. Wow. And it worked. Yeah, it, it, is, it seems to maybe <clears throat> be working. <laughs> um, I, I have another question. Just, uh, you got signed very easily, it seemed. How did that happen? Yeah, so he approached um, some people with unrelated stuff that he was doing on the side with his own music recording and production and they just started talking and because of various reasons yeah we were offered a, a artist development deal and wow yeah artist oh we should talk about that a we little should, bit yes more. let's talk about that but first a very important other question um where did you get the accent the accent. <laughs> <laughs> yes. and, do, and do you have any other? The accent. <laughs> I grew up in Canada and I lived in Canada for almost eight years of my life. So, I mean, moving from Freistadt. Freistadt to Canada. Freistadt. My English basically grew up there as well. Ah. So, <laughs> wow. That's do, where do, the accent comes from. Do you have a from. snippet of before that? that you I don't. That you can demonstrate. I mean... No. How much how much English do you speak in a small free state? Free state. So free state. Where, where free, state. free state are we talking of? Um so my parents are actually still in, in our town. Um it's called Venberg. Oh, wow. If you've ever driven from Cape Town to Johannesburg, any yes. sort of north, south and one yes. thing, you pass by. Thing. Lots of traffic cops, if I remember correctly, underneath the bridges. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Vinberg. Yeah. Okay. Actually, actually, your farm is like, the, or rather the N1 crosses your farm, right? Yeah, so they, they built the N1 right across, across the, the land. Whew. <clears throat> 
you know, that's a whole other topic. <laughs> Let's not get political. <laughs> no, yeah, leading me to the political side. Let's that, not get political. Is that, how, is, is that how you got into political side? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay, so you mentioned something about singing as a, as a child uh, in, in a choir, like a I think you said. Yeah. So, mm. but, but your love for music and for singing, is that where it came from? Or did you always know I wanted to sing? Or how did that happen? I mean, if you asked me when I was five years old, what do you want to do when you grow up? It was never like, oh, I want to be a singer. That was never an option in my mind to even pursue because yeah just doesn't seem like a realistic thing to want to do um but my family is quite musical my um on both sides my grandparents my oma and my opas either on either side of the family one or two of them have like a lot of musical talent and, and abilities which i mm. was largely unaware of until very recently um and I grew up in a in a house where my dad loves music as well. So I, I grew up just with music, always playing. Um, Does he play an instrument? Classical or music. No, oh, he, yeah. he well, he actually did do piano. Um, he played some piano. Um, but yeah, so I grew up with listening to classical music and the Hollies, still one of my favorites. Um, but yeah, so it's just always been a part of my life, but thinking of actively pursuing music was never mm. an option in my mind really wow. so it just kind of happened all right wow which now brings us to the next question fresh starts of fluctus which has gone gold very recently and mm -hmm. i think anybody that understands the business of music is having one point anything million views or more on a video is rated as highly successful. Mm. And pro and also in the light of the fact that you've been on Bursa Kefro, you've been in in the public space or in the public view quite a bit recently. And how do you deal with that? Um, I mean, I'm like, one of my core values is being authentic and real. And I think that's something that I've always valued. Um, so I think I deal with it just by kind of staying true to that and staying true to myself. I'm not going to pretend to be someone that I'm not really. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously you have to set boundaries and, and things like that in your life and have a measure of privacy is really important as well, just for your own sanity um, and everyone else's. Oh. So, <laughs> but no, I think there's no magic trick to it. I think just it's keeping a balance like everything else in your life. Um, it's just mm. another facet that gets added. And I, there is a measure of responsibility attached to it because you have some people looking up to you and maybe some, mm. um, especially like for for me, um, like younger children who are still like in school and things like that, that might be looking up to you. So I think you do have a measure of responsibility as well, which you have to keep in mind with like your activity on social media, what you say, what you post, um, but that's something that I've always been very conscious and aware of anyway, before this. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't say it's really affected my life that much directly. Practically, um, and, and we've, we get that a lot with people who now enters the business of music and mixed with social media, it's suddenly you enter a whole new world where your attention is almost demanded to be on a device how do you manage that yeah that's a that's a difficult one dark question <laughs> that is a very dark question um i think it's again about balance so knowing that maybe there are a few people who are interested in your life you have to provide them with some things and post some things and so on um, respond to some comments and interact with with people but I do think that everyone's aware that you de do need that measure of privacy and just time away from social media and stuff like that so I think in general people are really respectful about that so mm. we're and all just humans absolutely. and everyone everyone needs like time away from social media so. and you don't personally feel that you have to respond to all because I can imagine you get a lot of direct messages and if you don't have a manager 
mm. or, or as some other person managing mm. your social media profile, I can imagine you're also not able to get round to every hello how are you yeah so. i mean just keeping up with like your own personal like friendships <laughs> is already hard enough so if you have to try to do that as well it's just an impossible task yeah um so but it ha yeah i mean you just kind of deal with it as much as you can and you're very limited as a human being to what you can achieve in a day so i think mm -hmm. being mindful of that as well yeah it's my short and sweet answer to that. <laughs> it's short and sweet, and it's it's to the point and authentic. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, Renee, all right, so um, things may not have worked out romantically following Bursuk of Throw, but Rian seems to be doing very well. And you, you guys have just released your second single. I'm just curious, how's the whole journey been so far, and what have you been enjoying mm. about putting yourself and your music out there? It's been a very interesting journey. I've learned a lot, but I still have so much to learn. I mean, I'm completely new in this industry. I still actually don't know anything <laughs> about it. Uh -oh. um, so there's a massive learning curve and so much to get used to and really to learn. Um, but I think it's been it's been good to kind of have Rihan alongside me in the process because regardless of the fact that he has been involved in the industry, being involved in kind of this measure has also been new to him. Um, so I think we are both learning and yeah, it's cool to have someone to do that with. Um, and because we do have like the history, um, we yeah. do know each other really well. So we have that kind of, I don't know, a level of trust mm -hmm. with each other as well with regards to that. Um, so yeah, I think it's an interesting dynamic and it's, it's a cool like, kind of relationship to have now mm -hmm. um but yeah it's been it's been an interesting it's been an interesting one to figure out so maybe it's an unfair question at this stage of the game but i'm i'm just interested to know do you see yourself as part of this duo in, on, a, on a professional level and within this music industry for a long time that is an unfair question and i don't know if i can really answer that um as long as people enjoy the music and mm. we can continue doing it, oh. I would I would not be opposed to it. Um, I yes. have a lot of fun just because I think, yeah, because people enjoy the music and I actually enjoy singing it, yeah. um, which yeah, is yeah. important. <laughs> you have well, to enjoy actually it's singing the music too. It's difficult if people don't enjoy the music. <laughs> yeah, I mean that or kind of- Or you don't <laughs> enjoy making it. Yeah. <laughs> Or worse, you make a song that you enjoy listening to, but then you can't sing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> anyway, but you like singing your songs, which is fantastic. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Um, I think they have like good positive messages that they carry yeah. out as well. And I yeah, think it's fabulous. I think that's like our core thing as well is we want to carry across a positive message of yes. whatever it might be. Um, and I think that's cool. I think that's good. I think it's necessary. Um, yeah. yeah, so. Okay. I mean, I don't know if I, if that answers the question, but as long as we can keep doing it, um, I I would enjoy it, and I do enjoy it. So you said something now just before this. You are new in this thing. There's a big learning curve. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering, as a new artist entering the business of music, what do you think there that you might find is lacking at this moment, maybe in our country, in the industry, maybe support wise, things that you would like to maybe would like to have seen or be there for you as a, as a new artist? I hope the question is clear. The question is clear, but again, I don't know <laughs> if I can answer that because I haven't I've honestly not thought about it. Ah. Um, there are obviously some some gaps in like having knowledge of the industry and kind of the technicalities and how it works with regards to like publishing and royalties and those types of things. Um, it's not like you have a sit down session and they have like a little explainer to tell you, okay, this is what it is. This is how it works. This is how it's going to work for you as a duo or whatever. Um, mm. So yeah, I might be wrong. I'm sure those resources are available. No, I'm not sure. like those well, resources that are is, available. Maybe that's but... part of the problem. That's why I'm asking the question because yeah. I think many artists 
kind of battle with that you know maybe the resources are there but how do i access it yeah and yeah or maybe i don't even know it's there and i mean i'm just thinking now i'm yeah just recently i've heard of a lot of people who are, are established in the industry and like the kind of issues that they've had with royalties and things wow. like that so i no, think just, just even, even getting the legal stuff exactly explained to them well yeah i think this is a big and lack. and that's like those are people who are not like newbies in the industry they're mm. like established well-known artists yes. um in the entertainment industry so i think there's obviously like a big problem with regards to that if you're an artist and that's your main not yeah your main source of income as an artist and you have difficulty understanding how it works or difficulty like collecting it or whatever mm. the case may be um but yeah i think that's that might be yeah a thing mm. <laughs> yes it's not so clear and maybe you know this podcast is part of mm, unpacking sharing that. knowledge and unpacking yeah. some yeah. of that um okay well yeah, with some of the arts that we speak we actually have the, the idea of being a planner and a non-planner comes up and some of the challenges of mm. being a non-planner that you say yes to too many things from the little bit that i know you i know you you have your ducks in a row quite a bit oh no, oh, no. <laughs> it's an illusion <laughs> <But pretend>. Pretend. <laughs> what, what advice would you give to somebody in terms of that area of your life how do you structure your life as a creative under pressure you have a normal life you have a you have a career life. Oi. <laughs> Next question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> skip. <laughs> skip. <laughs> skip. Skip. Um, I, I'm a very big list person. And a calendar is very useful. And mm. it should be used more often. Wow. Yeah. And if you have to have like an old school actual notebook with a pen, then do that. But mm. it's it's hard to keep track of everything when you have a lot going on in your brain and a lot going on in your life. And you need to be able to kind of com compartmentalize it and write it down and make sure you can keep track of everything. And when you see it, it's a bit easier to do that. Is that a skill that you need to learn, do you think? <clears throat> Probably. Or was, it, I, or was it something you're born with? No, I don't think I you're think... born with it. You're definitely not maybe born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline, but maybe it's a skill. <laughs> Sorry. I think Sorry. some people are born with the ability to I make lists. I think it comes more naturally to some people. Some people just don't need to make lists. I didn't have to make lists before this year. I, I was able to keep like track of everything. I had a mind list, uh, but now I find it easier to just see everything on paper. Write it down. Yeah. Um, maybe it is a it definitely is a skill though because it's not something that everyone has. Some people are just naturally more organized. Yes. But, but I, I think I, I with, with, with regards to like this industry and the fact that it is a bit more creative, I don't think organization necessarily comes naturally to most people. But I think it could help creatives to Definitely. be organized. Definitely. To, to plan and to learn the skill. Mm. Yeah. Um, I worked at a um, <clears throat> performing arts college about a decade ago. And one of the big things that parents, one of their big concerns was, you know, but should my kid first go and get a degree and then do arts mm. or get into the, <laughs> you know, the performing <laughs> arts. Now, you, you did it probably the way that most parents would have liked their kids to do it. You <laughs> got a degree and you became a lecturer. Yeah. Um, and then only you, you got involved in the, in the music industry. Do you think it's important to first get something behind your name, get a qualification? My opinion on this has changed quite a bit. I think um, you should pursue whatever your passion is. And if that is getting a degree in something else and maybe concurrently like expanding your creative side and playing around with music or whatever it might be it could be any sort of performing arts while you study because that, it's not impossible to do that um then you should do that but if you're 100 yeah. percent on percent sent on um pursuing a creative career um whether it be performing arts or visual arts or whatever it might be i think there definitely is merit to just pursuing it directly as well hmm. 
it's a fr- fresh view fresh view on it because like it, yeah. very often people want to force you know a f- force you into a, a formula yes. you know, a sp- a sp- i don't think there is a formula though and <clears throat> no, it I, I differs it differs for each and every person as well what worked for me yeah. doesn't necessarily work for someone else i mean the fact that i'm even I don't even want to say I'm in the industry because I don't even see myself as being part of the industry. If you're yet. on this show, um, you're in the industry. <laughs> yes. I don't. I don't see myself as being part of the industry because it's all still so new and fresh, and I mean things can change so quickly. Um, I forget what my point was, but no, we were talking about if there is there a formula. Oh, there is no formula. What mm, works? Yeah. What? What? My story is completely different. I mean, it's not like I studied for three years or four years. Um, intensively like and I feel ashamed saying this because it's not like I intensively like did voice lessons or like sang the entire time or practiced an instrument or two um it just kind of I just did it casually kind Mm. of whereas other people really work on developing that talent that they have and that passion that they have while studying and then pursue it after they finish their Mm. degree and it works wonderfully for them Mm. whereas on the other hand some people just go into music or the arts directly and it's great for them Mm. so it really depends on the individual and their gifts and abilities and i think a lot of it has to do with this is a risky word to use but like chance and luck no and timing it's absolutely that it definitely has a lot to do i know you know. It's super, like, the timing and chance, it was, yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Look, we're very sure. curious. Oh, we're very uh, <laughs> tempted to ask you the story of how you actually got involved in Bursuke Frau, but... Uh, uh, do we have to talk about? <laughs> no, no, maybe it's for another. Maybe it's too too little to do with the business of music. <laughs> but I mean, it's just, it's a beautiful story of taking a chance. Yeah. And you were at the right place at the right time, and it worked out. Yeah, so, it it worked out in some ways and it didn't work out in other ways. Mm. But I think, yeah, nothing is ever just in for nothing. Mm. So yeah, what helps you to remain creative and passionate about what you do? Mm, I don't know about the creative part. I'll get back to that in a second. But to remain passionate, I think you just really have to love. In my case, music. Um, and because it always seemed like such an unrealistic thing to be a part of, I think it just feels so unreal. That's kind of like, I don't want to say a driving force, but it definitely helps to kind of keep the passion there because I have always loved music and now I'm kind of in the middle of it and I get to make music and work with brilliant people in the industry. Um, so that definitely helps kind of put some pressure on as well, though. Um, um, <laughs> so yeah. definitely adds a, a little bit of a an element of pressure. Um, in terms of remaining creative, I think um, listening to, I mean, just listening to music and um, getting inspiration from unexpected places also. Um, so expanding your kind of field of genres that you listen to. Mm. Um, Listen to other languages, like listen to French music or something like that. Mm. Canadian Um, music. uh, French Canadian. French Canadian. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, (laughs) just drawing inspiration from all different sources. And yeah, I think that that definitely helps. Okay. I think. Yeah. That's that's what I got. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So Renee, you have a very unusual story. So maybe again, the question is um, <laughs> is an interesting and an open one. But what what would you what would your advice be to a creative or a dreamer out there who mm. wants to be involved in the music or even the entertainment industry? Mm. What would be a possible first step that you could think of? A possible first step is decide what it is that you want from it. Do you want to actually pursue it as a career option? Is that what you want to do with your life? Or is it more just, I, this is maybe not the right word to use, but is it more like just a sideline hobby, side hustle thing that, that you want to do? Um, mm. I think establishing that is a very important first step because you can do any creative thing in a more like informal manner. 
Um, so I think that's an important first step. And then like knowing that it's 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 a very like um, unstable and unpredictable kind of industry to be in. And it's super risky because mm. people are very um, kind of changeable in in what they want and how they receive your music. Um, so it's yeah. it is very risky. You, you never know how it's going to how it's going to be received. Um, so that's also very scary. I know like the second single that we just released came out a few days ago and I didn't sleep for like nights before because I was so nervous about how people were going to react to it. And are they going to react at all? Um, yeah, the fact that 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 phrase that flux has worked is no measure of, yeah. you know, yeah. promise that the next one would work. Exactly. This, this industry is so crazy. And for for us, for Rian, I mean, the first single and how well it's been doing, it's set the bar so high. Um, mm. We had to like remind ourselves that the second one, it's pro it's not gonna do anything near that. Like it's not gonna get close to how well Freisot Flactus did. Um, even though we do love the song, yeah. we still love it. I super enjoy it. Um, yeah, it's just kind of managing your own expectations as well. Mm, yeah. Can can we be expecting more? Yes. Rin singles soon. Yes. It's gonna rain down, man. Tran rien. Expect Tran the rain. Tran rien. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. No, we are working on some more. Good. Some more music. Dancing. It's gonna be exciting stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What? Yeah. Ah. And performing as well. We're starting to do shows as well, so. Oh, oh wow! Yeah. So things are kind of relaxing when it comes to the regulations of COVID and opening up spaces. I mean, for that's artists. also unpredictable, but Very. the planning is that we're gonna start doing some right. gigs and yeah, just releasing Fantastic. a few more singles and seeing how that goes. Yeah, Rene de Clark, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and your insight. And mm. from our side, many, many, uh, you know, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? May the Freistad Flachtes <laughs> be leveled out in front of your musical Thank career. Thank you. May the Flachtes be with you. May the Flachtes be with you. And um, yeah, I think... It be a song on its own, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Third single <laughs> coming up. Mental really, note. Yeah, from our side, thank you so much and appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, from <laughs> my side too. Thank you very much, Renee. And if you like this, if you enjoyed this, please press the like button, subscribe, and share this with friends and family. Till next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.